Hello everybody, this is Dr. Day with uh, Physics 152 at K College. Wanted to give the second video of our term on learning to decompose electric fields. First things first, what does decomposing mean? It just means to break something into smaller components. So in many cases it works easier to work backwards instead of forwards. So what we're going to do, instead of trying to break a complicated electric field apart, is we're going to look at how do we build more complicated electric fields again. So let's imagine that I had two charges, Q1 and Q2, and I don't know what um, the charges are. Is one of them positive, one of them negative, are they both positive, are they both negative, I, I don't know. And I asked you, what could the electric field be at location A due to these two charges? So we're working in sort of the approximation that we are far away from any other relevant charges, and these are the only two things that matter. Well, so first things first, what do we know? We know that this charge, if it's positive, is going to create a field that, you know, goes away from it, right? If this charge were instead negative, it would be creating a field coming towards it. And we know that for each of these. So what we're going to do is say, okay, at location A, which we can see is on a line from location 1, that the field is either going to go this way or this way due to Q1. And similarly, from Q2, if it were positive, you know, we sort of think of the line along there, its field would be that way or its field would be that way. So now we have four possibilities. Q1 could be this way or this way. Q2 could be this way or this way. And we now have to look at the superposition of those possibilities. All right. So here is just me drawing schematically what I'm saying. And now we ask ourselves, okay, if these are the possibilities, what do we now know? Well, what do you see? You see that the electric field length for uh, the field due to Q1 is shorter in length than it is for Q2. So what can we deduce? Well, now we have to say, well, it depends on the distance, right? It could be that Q2 is stronger, but it could also be that Q2 is closer. Well, let's, let's look. So Q1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 boxes away. All right, so we say, okay, R for 1 to our location A is 9 boxes. <clears throat> now, I don't know what each box is. It could be a meter, it could be a centimeter, but it's not really going to matter because what do we do if we don't know that sort of stuff? We do a ratio and we get rid of all the things that are in common. So Q2 is 1, 2, whoops, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 boxes away, but it's diagonal. So R for 2 to A is going to be 5 square root of 2 boxes. Right? If you don't remember your standard 45, 45, 90 triangle, I suggest that you go back and take a look now. So now you might be looking at them going, gosh, I'm not sure what square root of 2 is. You can plug it into your calculator, you find it's about 1.4. So that means that R2 A is about 7 boxes. Okay. So <clears throat> what do we know? We know that R2, right, is going to be less than R1. So can we make a statement about whether or not um, the charge of Q2 is greater than Q1? And the answer is maybe. And we'd have to be a little bit more careful about it. We'd have to actually write down the ratios of the electric fields as we did in the last video, like E1 over E2. Okay? And I encourage you to give that a shot because it helps you with the thinking, it helps you with the reasoning. And if you need a little bit of help on counting these, these out, I would say the electric field due to one is about 1 1.5 boxes long. And the electric field due to two is two square root of two boxes long. That's not totally the focus of this video, but because we can ask the question and it dovetails well with the last video, I wanted to go ahead and look at it. So now let's actually look at how do we build the electric field at point A. And we're going to look at how do we build the electric field at point A because we want to figure out later, if I tell you the answer, how do you unbuild it or how do you decompose it. All right. <clears throat> so I want you to try this yourself. I want you to pause the video and work out these four cases. That is, if Q1 is positive, you know, Q2 is positive. If you have taken biology courses, you ever looked at cell cultures and adding different things in, you see these sorts of systems a lot. You know, lack is plus, glucose is negative, et cetera, et cetera, trying to see what the, the behavior is. So that's kind of where I'm borrowing this kind of chart from, just to kind of be reminiscent of that.
But please, pause the video and, and give it a try. All right. So I'm going to presume that you've all done that. And let's now look at the first case. So now I have Q1, and I'm assuming that it's positive. And so that means I'm going to draw an electric field that goes in that direction. And I have Q2, again, assuming that it's positive, and this electric field goes in that direction. And so now when I add those vectors together carefully, I get something that looks like the following. So if they're both positive, E total would be that. So let's now imagine the reverse. Let's imagine that all you were told was that the electric field at location A was the following, and you had these two charges. Well, it seems easy when you know the answer that you could just easily break it back apart. But that's really what we're after. And problem two of week one is asking you to do this sort of thing. All right, let's move on to our next case. Here we're going to make Q1 positive. So Q1 is pointing away, and Q2 is going to be negative, so it's pointing towards. If I carefully add those vectors together, I get that as my total. And so now again, I ask you to imagine, what if you only knew the electric field at A were given by that vector? How would you figure out what it had to be? Right. This is where you have to carefully break apart these notions. And so let me just, I'm going to draw uh, a different case um, from this real quick. And we're going to say, let's say that at this location, I have a field that looks like the following. Okay. And so this is going to be my E total. And I know that that's due to some QA, and that's due to some QB. All right. And so now we ask, <coughs> how could I have built that field? Where could it have come from? Well, we know that A is either going to point. Oops. We know that A is either going to point this way or that way, and we know that B is either going to point this way or that way. So hopefully you're starting to see how this works, right? A can't be negative because that would make it go the following direction. A must contribute this direction. So with that being the case, we can say, well, because of this arrangement, because of this location we chose, A has to be contributing all of that part of the field. And then we can say, well, B can't be positive or it would be adding this way. So B must be negative and pointing that way. So now we can realize that, oh, that's got to be the field due to B. Now, if this looks out of place and you wonder, well, how can B be down here? It's not. B's field is, is here, right? But remember, when we add vectors, we put them tail to, uh, tail to tip. Right? So that's EB, that's EA. So then, therefore, what do we see? We see that QB has to be negative, and we see that QA has to be positive. And now we could work out, based on how far away each one was, what the relative strengths were. All right. So let's finish the examples that we're looking at. <clears throat> now I have Q1 is negative and Q2 is positive. So Q1 is negative. It means the field's coming towards it. Q2 is positive. means the field's going away from it. So when I add those vectors together, this is what I get. And then just for completeness, we'll do the last case in which both are negative. Q1's field is coming towards it, Q2's field is coming towards it. I add this vector to the end, and there's my total. So hopefully the last two that we did were really pretty straightforward to you. Hopefully this whole thing is beginning to make some sense. Um, there isn't just a simple way to do these things. You have to look at it, you have to think about it, you have to be creative. And we're here to help you do that. Please do ask questions as you have them. Thank you.